My name's Steve, and I've lived on the edge of the West Pennine Moors all my adult life. And uh, I was chatting to my dad recently about my grandfather. He was a collier, and he tells the tale of when my father was a child, he was playing with his toys on the floor, and his father, he couldn't see because he was reading a newspaper. But he suddenly sensed that there was something wrong, and he turned up, looked round and said, Are you right, Dad? And my grandfather said, yes, son, I'm fine. But in fact, he'd just gone blind. Earlier, a couple of days earlier, he had helped rescue a man from a cave-in at the pit. And in the collapse, he was struck on the head by a heavy piece of timber. And he got out of the mine, they all escaped. But a few days later, for whatever reason, he went blind. Now, he did regain some sight later in life. But uh, as my father said, it was just expected. They didn't give medals for that sort of thing. We've been up to have a look at the Turton Moor Mine, which is one of the many mines that dot the landscape in Pennine, Lancashire. There's been mining here since medieval times, but most of them are really small, what are called bell pits. This one is unusual in that it's slightly bigger and it was operated from the 1830s probably through to the beginning of the 20th century. When it closed, I don't know. It produced manufacturing coal, coal for, for, coal for mill boilers, not for railway locomotives, and fire clay, this wonderful clay that comes out with the coal, and they use that to make sanitary ware. And you can see on the landscape today, the long tramway all the way down to the woods at the bottom, which is where the factory for the sanitary ware once stood and that's the most distinctive feature in the landscape. You can see the lovely romantic ruins, I like to think, of Cooper's Farm nestled into the hillside. The barns are really all that remains. The farmhouse itself, I'm afraid, is just uh, where the sheep find their pasture nowadays. When mining ceased, I don't know. I mean, it had 60 men working below ground. It had two shafts, and there was 10 men working on the surface, so it was quite a substantial operation for this area. Um, I think it would probably have been wound up certainly by 1920 because other mines in the uh, Knowles concern, they were employing hundreds and hundreds of men. So I don't think it would have survived that long. I think it mainly survived because of the fire clay it produced for the uh, drain pipes and stuff that were manufactured just down the hill from the mine itself. <laughs> 